Hey Tom, um, I was just on the phone with a customer that uh, plans to install strain gauges on a carbon fiber filament wound tube and he asked me what the right self temperature compensation number is for carbon fiber and I wanted to get your take on it and see what you thought. Well, let's talk about that. First thing is, is there going to be a change in temperature? If there's no change in temperature, STC becomes immaterial. He doesn't have to worry about it. But if there is, then what we want to do is do one of two things. So the self temperature compensation, it's a heat treatment process that we do on oil to match the CTE or coefficient of thermal expansion, STC or self temperature compensation of the gauge. For instance, mild steel expands at about six parts per million per degree Fahrenheit. Six. Aluminum, on the other hand, it's going to be 13 parts. What is his carbon fiber? Some carbon fiber in line with the carbon fiber itself, it might be close to zero, zero. Yeah, I, th I think in this case we discussed that and the carbon fiber composite has a really low coefficient of thermal expansion. So I was leaning him towards using a zero, zero STC value. Now, in some occasions a zero, three might be slightly better if they've got a lot of matrix material in there, a lot of the epoxies there that might tend to want to make it expand a little bit more than it would normally do. Yes. Zero, zero STC for a carbon fiber material is a good starting point. Now, <clears throat> the discussion came up about the data that we provide with the strain gauges uh, relative to the STC value. And if I remember correctly, if you have a zero, zero compensated gauge, then the reference material we use is titanium silicate. That's correct. Titanium silicate, TSB1, if you want to buy it from us, uh, has a almost zero coefficient of thermal expansion very similar to that of what carbon fiber would be. So we're going to bond that gauge to that titanium silicate and we're going to throw it into some heat and look at its polynomial for high temperature and we're going to throw it into some liquid nitrogen, look at how it gets cold, and we'll, that's that polynomial that you get on the data sheet. It's either a fourth or fifth order polynomial. All you got to do is measure temperature. Now, that's going to give you good temperature compensation, but if you want perfect, you need to use a compensating gauge. You need to a lot, preferably from the same package of gauges that you put onto a cool that doesn't have stress. And then you compare that to your material that it is under stress, expose them to the same temperature, and you subtract away the coupon gauge data from the active data and what's left behind is the real strain. What about the reference material, say, for a 06 compensated gauge? or even a 13, what do we use for those? Well, we use, I think, 2024 T4 aluminum for the uh, uh, 13, and as I recall, it's uh, 1018 steel for the uh, 06. Okay. Common materials that, you know, there's, it, it, that's the ones that are mostly used. Now, they're alloys of steel that will be slightly different, and alloys of aluminum that will be slightly different. And that's why we say if you're going to have a very good thermal output correction, then you must develop your own thermal output polynomial or use a compensating gauge. Those are the two ways to do it. So I think to summarize for this customer on carbon fiber, it sounds like zero, zero or zero, 03 could be good choices depending on the exact coefficient of thermal expansion. And either way, uh, for most accurate results, he should put the gauges on the carbon fiber and then basically generate his own thermal output curve. Yeah, trust but verify. Verify that polynomial. If it doesn't behave exactly like the package, then you need to adjust that and use that to correct your data. Okay, great. All right, appreciate you taking the time. No problem, Daryl. Anytime.